Unbelievable. We are right in the middle of the heart, inside the left heart chamber. This really is a fantastic journey, and everything is slower than in real life, so we can better understand it. A heartbeat here lasts not one, but ten seconds. Up ahead is the valve to the aorta, the body's main artery. And directly behind this valve is the entrance to the coronary arteries. The pumping power of the heart is amazing, and inside here, you don't even notice it. I can just switch off the stabilizer of our mini-sub, and then we will feel the shaking, which is much closer to the real situation. Do that. We want to enter the coronary artery anyway. Okay, hold on tight. Are you ready? I know, I know. I'm on the way. Oh, that's wonderful. Uh... We're stuck. Oh, that. That will be over soon. What was that? I can explain it to you. Let's have a camera rerun. Here you can clearly see how the coronary artery is squeezed flat. The heart is a huge muscle that contracts with every heartbeat in order to pump the blood. With every contraction of the heart muscle, however, the arteries of the heart are also squeezed together. And this happens with each heartbeat? I mean, does each heartbeat squeeze the coronary arteries flat? Yes, exactly. The heart beats on average once a second, or about 85,000 times a day. And in real time, this is what it would look like. And we get squeezed in the process. That's quite stressful. And now you can also understand why people get infarctions of the heart and not the ear, nose, or knee. Explain this to me. Imagine if the artery walls that you see around us are weakened and these wall cells lose their elasticity, for example, by malnutrition and vitamin deficiency. Then it will be the coronary arteries of the heart that fail first because of the tremendous mechanical stress they undergo with every heartbeat. Now we can understand why heart attacks are the number one cause of death. That's interesting, but I'll be glad when we get out of here. That shouldn't take much longer. We are already coming close to the capillary system. Look, the diameter of the pipeline is narrowing, and the number of endothelial cells is decreasing. These are the cells we can see everywhere around us. The narrowest parts of the capillary system often only consist of a single endothelial cell. Thus, only a single cell can pass through this tiny canal system at a time. Luckily, our mini-sub has just the size of a single blood cell. Watch what is happening around us. The red blood cells are changing color slightly and becoming darker. You are right. The red blood cells, the erythrocytes, transfer oxygen to the heart muscle cells to keep them working. In return, they absorb the cell exhaust, the carbon dioxide. Here in the capillary system, the heart cells are also supplied with vital micronutrients and they excrete cellular waste into the bloodstream. Hey, we can learn a lot from you on this journey. Well, that's why we're here. With the waste in rich blood, we are now entering the veins and will flow back to the right heart chamber from here. To the heart? We're going to repeat the whole thing? Yes, if I don't stop our mission before. I I've had enough. Never in my entire life will I forget this ride with you today. Above all, the experience of being squeezed inside the coronary arteries. <laughs> my pleasure. Look, over there is the right atrium and the right heart chamber. From there, the blood flows into the lung, where the red blood cells get new oxygen. That, however, is another journey.